Who are we? We are his creations. We are his precious creations. And that is the hard part for women, right? Because women are thinking, well, Lord, why didn't you knit me together six foot tall? Or I'm thinking, Lord, why didn't you just knit me together more like five, seven? Do I have to be taller than everybody? <laughs> you know? Or Lord, why didn't you just knit me together with that D cup? Or why didn't you just knit me together with clear skin that doesn't break out like this or doesn't age and she has perfect skin? That's my, my battle. Like she has just perfect skin. You know, whatever. We all have our thing. That's the hard part for women, but are we getting our identity from comparing to other women or are we getting it, our identity from the word? We know the, the impact the world has on women. 80% of women are unsatisfied with their appearance. Eight out of 10. 70% of women are depressed, are actually depressed about their size or shape. Over two, two thirds of women think life would improve if they were just happy with their bodies. So two out of three of us believe the lie that our life would be better if we were just happy with our bodies. But here's the statistical truth. 1% of women are happy with their bodies. <sighs> One out of 100 are actually happy with their bodies. And I think they're lying. <laughs> Over half of American women say their bodies disgust them. Ladies. What does the Bible use as a symbol for the body? The church. When the Bible is referring to the body, it's referring to the church. Over half of us say our bodies, the house of God. That's what the Bible says the body is. The house of God is the temple. It's the church. We are the body. We are the body but we hate the body, we hate it. And I don't want to dis dismiss the pain of the bleeding woman, of women in here who've battled cancer, who've, who, who've battled significant illness, pain. It's hard, to, very, very, very difficult to be obese in our, in our culture. It's very difficult when your body is not measuring up. I know that just only from my experience, just my small experience with the acne, when your body is not cooperating with what you want it to be. But the world's answer is to fix it from the outside in. Extreme body makeover, baby. Outside in, baby, put a mask on it. Let's do a makeover. Let's, you know, right, let's give you some new lips. Let's give you some, an eye lift. It's, outside, it's all outside in. It's not all those things that are necessarily inherently bad, biblically speaking. It's the heart that we have to check. And it's the mask that is not going to heal us. God's answer is 2 Corinthians 4, 7. He says, but we have this treasure in these jars of clay, okay? We are the clay, he is the potter, the jar of clay is us. The treasure is the spirit. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Clearly, without the power of God within me, I'm just an empty jar of clay. No reason why you should be listening to me right now. None. I'm just an empty jar of clay, but I have this treasure inside of me. I have this power inside of me that is from God, not from me. He goes on in verse 8, we're hard pressed on every side. This is women battling diseases, women who are men, people who are in the hospital right now. We're crushed, we're perplexed, but we're not in despair. We're persecuted, but we're not abandoned. We're struck down, but we're not destroyed. But we always carry out around in our body the death of Jesus. We carry the death, the cross in the body so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. 2 Corinthians 4, 16, therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly, we are wasting away, girl. Just take a good hard look at your grandmother. <laughs> do it, you young ones especially. Just take a good long look at grandma. Outwardly, you're wasting away. But inwardly, we can be renewed day by day 
So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, not on the reflection in the mirror, but on what is unseen, for what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. What we can't see is our eternal value. That bathroom mirror doesn't tell me who I am any more than that man does. My value is found not in what I can see, but what I can't see. All right. Got it? Do we got it? Let's do this. Okay. I am his beloved daughter. I am his, daughter. I am his precious creation. I am his precious creation. Do you believe that? Believe it. That is who you are. Nobody can take that away from you. Nobody. It's an eternal value that lasts. Okay, third mirror of the world, the magazines. Let's take a good look at some of these magazines. Oh, I just love the magazines. All right. 875 ways to look beautiful. Right? 859 ways to get pretty for summer. You've got a couple weeks. <laughs> 527 ways to shine for the holidays. 656 fashion beauty ideas. 615 amazing makeover ideas. Are we in the thousands yet? 257 spring beauty and fashion tricks. Oh, this is a great one. 25 new beauty products that will change your life. How many of those do you have in your cupboard? My cupboard is full of beauty products that didn't change my life. How odd. This is classic, classic, instant happy. Bing! <laughs> we can be instantly happy if somebody airbrushes me. <laughs> All-time fave right here. 176 tips to simplify your life. <laughs> it's just an all-timer. Truly. I'll start with number one tomorrow, right? <laughs> As if we need more things to do. <laughs> 176 ways. Can you achieve ageless beauty? You know, all of this. You know, statistics say that the average girl today sees four to 600 ads a day. The average fashion model is thinner than 98% of American women. Let's not try to measure up to a standard that is not of God. After three minutes spent looking at fashion magazines, 70% of women felt de depressed, guilty, and ashamed, and angry. I mean, you know, we warn our daughters about sex, drugs, alcohol. Do we warn our daughters about fashion magazines? After three minutes of looking at a fashion magazine, three out of four of us feel guilty, depressed, and angry. I'm one of them. I am in that group. Why would we ever spend any time looking at anything that makes us feel depressed, guilty, ashamed, or angry. If we are the precious creation of God, this is twisted. This is not of Him. And I say that as one who's coming out of the magazines, who was in the magazines, to speak the truth about this. Amen? It is time. It is time. And the voices of the daughters of the king are, being, are now starting to resonate the same message. You are beautiful because you are his hand-knit creation. That is from the enemy. That is from the enemy. Over half of teens say they want to lose weight. Why? Because, because of magazine pictures. Because of magazine pictures. You know, the other thing about this ma these magazines is they teach us that your body is just a thing right? Your body is a toy. Sex is a game, baby. Cosmopolitan, okay? Cosmo is replete just from cover to cover on how to please your guy, how to, how to go down on your guy, how to do this to your guy, how to mount your guy, how, oh, how to please your guy, how to use your body to get your guy. Your guy? I'm so sorry. You're going to give the precious creation of God to a guy? These magazines are not married, are marketed to married women. Married women read Cooking Light. <laughs> right? 
I saw, I saw the most brilliant thing the other day. It was a whole magazine, just chicken recipes. Just the whole thing. I was like, I need that magazine. I, I have to figure out another way to cook chicken. <laughs> These magazines are marketed to unmarried women. And what they teach them is that their body is a toy, sex is a game, right? It's just a thing. Your body's just a thing used to please your guy. And what's happening? Our teen girls are exercising their sexuality long before they're ready, ready for it long before, and I understand that because I was in the world and I believed the lies of the world. I did not grow up in the church, but today you are here in church, and I'm here to tell you today, I want to tell you something that I didn't know when I was a teenager, and that's the why not. You know, uh, my mother actually taught sex education in the public schools in, in my community. And it was the just say no program, just say no, just say no, right? Abstinence space, say no, say no. But none of us ever really, really heard the why not. And I want to tell you the why not, okay? And here's the why not. In Genesis, it says that our bodies, when we have sex with someone, become one right? We become one flesh. That's how Samuel has my eyes and daddy's skin and Olivia's got gifts and talents from daddy and, and, and other talents and gifts from me because when mommy and daddy came together, we became one and then we bore one flesh from two become one, right? Well, what happens is, is when that relationship breaks up, okay, that's where we get the heartbreak, right? That one flesh, then when the relationship goes like that, and he goes one way and you go another, you get your heart, the flesh of your heart gets torn. And then you go with another one. And then that doesn't work out. And you give him everything, everything, because you loved him and you thought that that was right. And then the flesh of your heart gets torn. And those that were sexually abused were torn. We're just so torn. Just so torn. And then so many of us, without the blood of Christ, walk down on our wedding day. And we're coming to the man that that God's given us and we're getting married and we're giving him our heart. Here. <sighs> and he is left to pick up the pieces of your shame, your heartbreak. Maybe there was an abortion in there. And there's all this pain that's the why not. Just say no. Say no because that's not God's design. God's design is wholeness. God's design is purity. And by the power of the cross, you bet your bottom dollar, I walked down the aisle on my wedding day wearing a white gown. I wasn't wearing a crown, but I had a veil. <laughs> And I had been crowned a daughter of the king, made whole and pure by the blood of the lamb. But that's the why not, girls. That's the why not. I'd love to save you from that. When we look to the magazines to tell us our value, we're just poisoned by lies. And here's the lie. Your value is your flesh. But the flesh has no value, right? Because it's just a thing. You are what you look like. Right? You are your body, but your body doesn't really have any value. You could just give it away to some guy. Lady Gaga. Let's talk about her later. <laughs> what happens when we look to the mirror of the world? 
The magazines poison us with lies, but we turn and we look to the mirror of the word and we're gonna ask ourselves the same, same three questions. Who's a quick study? What are magazines? They're just creations of man. It's not the magazines that are bad. If you read magazines that fill your soul, clearly, with good things, we're on the right track. But what do the magazines say? They say you're not enough the way you are. All these magazines say that. You're the Lord of your body. They say nothing is holy, right? And who is God? In Leviticus 19.1, the Lord says to Moses, speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. The magazines are creations of man. Creations of man can twist and confuse our value. But who is God? God is holy. And what does he say? In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, he says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you've received from God? You are not your own. You know, the whole abortion thing is, well, it's my body. I, I mean, I can do what I want with it. The Lord says right here, no, it's not. It is not your body. You didn't make it. You didn't buy it, sweetie. It's mine. It's my creation. It is not yours. He says, you are not your own. You were bought at a price, the price of the blood of the lamb. Therefore, honor God with your body. Who are we? We find out who we are in the light of a holy God. If he is holy and he is Lord, who are we? The word teaches that we are temples. We are his temples. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's a temple. It's a sacred place. If you study the temples of the Old Testament, they were paved with precious stones. The, The floors of the temples were paved with precious stones. Your body is a temple. It is not just a place that some guy can come in and take what he wants and go on his merry way. It is holy ground, holy ground. The, when you walked into the temple, you took off your feet. It was holy, it was holy ground. The Lord reside, resided in that place. It was holy ground. And God adorned his temple with jewels and beautiful things. But the power in the temple was that the spirit was in the temple. Is is God's spirit in your temple today? When the spirit would be removed from the temple because of sin in the temple, the temple would be dark the way I once was. There would be no light in the temple. But when his spirit would return, his presence would would turn and bask in its glory into the temple. The temple would be full of power again and full of light. Is God's spirit in you today? Jesus had a very passionate relationship with the temple. And he has a passionate relationship with the temple of you. He says, you are my temple. The first time that we see Jesus interacting with the temple is when uh, he's born, right? His parents come and they dedicate him in the temple, right? And they bring the baby Jesus, the baby Jesus to the temple, and they dedicate him there. When, When you first receive Christ and you open the window of your heart, he is born as a baby in you. He's born. You're born again. You're born new. That's all. That's all he cares about at that moment. He's just born in you. The next time we see Jesus interacting with the temple, this is a great story. His mother can't find him. They've lost him. Wouldn't you love that? I'm sorry. I'm the, I'm the mother of the king of the universe, and I, I can't find him. I can't see him. I can't see him. He's, I don't know where he is. Joseph, have you seen Jesus? John, find him. He's going to save the world from their sins, the angel told me. And I I don't know where he went. I'm kind of responsible here. (laughs) Right? And so he's missing for three days. You know where they found him? In the temple. After a while, Jesus starts to grow up in us. He was just sitting in the temple listening, asking questions. After a while, he starts to do that with me and you. He starts just to listen starts to ask you a couple questions. Maybe he's doing that with you today. Just asking you a few questions. How's it going, baby? How are you and me? How's our relationship? Did someone teach you that? Really? Well, the Word of God says this. 
Oh, did you think that? Oh, well, that's actually a lie. Do you want to know the truth? And people were amazed at his wisdom. And then the next time we see Jesus in the temple is when he begins his ministry and he stands up and he quotes Isaiah 61. And this is what he does with us. After a while, Jesus starts to stand up in us, doesn't he? He stands up and he says, you know, I, I came to free you from that. Right? I came to bind up your broken heart. He says, I came to bring you good news, baby. I know that right now in your life it just seems like it's bad news and bad news, but I came to bring you good news. He says, I came to release you from that sin. I came to release you from that darkness. I came to provide for you. Why do you keep questioning me if I'm going to provide for you? I was born in you and I'm rising up in you because I promised you that I would provide for you. I am going to provide for you, he says to you today. I am. Don't doubt that. He says, and you're grieving, and I know you are, but I, became, I came to bestow on you a crown of beauty instead of ashes. You know, when Satan was thrown out of heaven, the Bible teaches that God threw him and removed him to ashes, to dust on the ground. So, so from the throne room of heaven, he was reduced to ashes as a slithering snake on the ground. You know what? That's exactly where he wants you to stay. Did something burn up in your life? Did something crash and burn? And he, he's, he's saying, stay down here with me. You're crushed. And we have to turn to him and say, uh-uh, uh-uh. The Word of God, we have to speak truth to the lie every time. That's why you have to know the Word of God. The Word of God says that when God crushed His Son on the cross, He crushed the serpent. You are crushed. And the Word of God says that He came to bring ashes and turn them into beauty. He says, I came to comfort you and provide for you those that are grieving. I came to bestow on you a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. I came to rebuild your ancient ruins and restore the places long ago devastated. I came to plant you as a crown of splendor, a royal diadem in my hand. That's what I came for. Are you ready? And he stands up in our lives. And you know, the next time we see Jesus in the temple, he gets a little mad, right? He gets his uh, whip of cords. He, he makes this whip of cords. He sees all this sin in the temple. See, the Spirit of God can't reign where there's sin. You know that. If you're in sin today, you know the Spirit of God's not reigning in you. I know what that is. That's why every day I'm on my face and saying, darn it, I'm a sinner and I need you. I blew it again. Ah, help me. Forgive me. Don't let me do that again. Teach me. Teach me. Right? Because when there's sin in the temple, he's turning over the tables. He gets really mad. It says, zeal for my father's house will consume me. That's what he says. He quotes Zechariah. Zeal for my father's house will consume me. There's sin in this temple. It's all about money to you people. What is this? This is my father's house. This is my father's house. That's what he says about you. You, you are my father's house. You are the temple. You are my father's house. I will not allow sin to reign here anymore. This is my father's house. This is where my father lives. She's not just a thing. Get behind me, you loathsome serpent. This is my father's house. And you know how passionately he felt that? He felt it so passionately that he, the last mention that he made of the temple is when he went to the cross. He says, my body is the temple broken for you. I'll die for the temple. I'm going to die for you. I'm 
Let's pray. Zeal for your Father's house consumes you. You have such zeal for us. Forgive us for feeling, for believing the lies of the world. Forgive us for looking at the mirror and looking at the magazines and looking at the men and thinking that they define us. My goodness, where have we gone wrong? You define us. You define us. You who is holy and true. And ladies, as you keep your heads bowed, I just want to take some time. Before we move on in the day, let's take some time to ask ourselves, where do I stand? Where do I stand in my relationship with God? Do I need Jesus to be born in me today? Raise your hand if you do, if today is your day. I see you there, raise your hand, I wanna look at you, yeah. Keep your hands raised and high and reaching. If today is your day that you want Jesus to be born in you, you want to be crowned his daughter, Raise your hand. Look at me. Just look at me even. Just go face to face. Keep your head down if you are already walking with the Lord, if you are already a believer and empowered with the Holy Spirit. But if you're not, look at me, nod at me, and I will give you today a chance. Just give me a little hand, a little nod. Today is your day. <laughs> I see you back there. Give me a nod. I want to see your face. You know, Jesus looked for him in the crowd. I see you, and I see you, and I see you. And he sees you, and you think sometimes he doesn't see you. But you are not just a face in the crowd. You are precious. You are holy. You are chosen. Receive his, receive his word to you today. And another, just look at me and nod at me even. Look me square in the face if today is your day. You want to receive Jesus as your Savior. I see you. Hmm. Those that look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Let him wash all the shame. Let him wash it all off. I see you in the back. Anybody else? Just raise your hand to me. I see you back there. I see you back there. And he sees you in the crowd. One, two, three. Peter, James, John, go. I love it way in the back. And I see you ladies, I see you raising your hands. Just take a good look at me. Look at your look at me. If you want to receive Christ. You, you? Give me a nod. Thank you. Today born. Huh, look at how many. My goodness gracious. How many more? Nods, hands. Make sure that I've acknowledged you. You? Give me a nod and a hand. Those who acknowledge their Father on earth will be acknowledged in heaven. I love it. Continue to be bold like that. Continue. Don't, don't stop. Another one. In the back. I see you two in the back. I see you. I'm so proud of you. You go, girl. This is just the beginning. You two. Just the beginning. What is he going to do with your life? What is he going to do with all the broken pieces of your life? I can't wait to see. Let him put you back together in a whole new way. I will see you again. And in the back, anybody else? Raise your hand. I see you over here and here. My goodness gracious, the harvest is ripe. Today's your day, sweetie pie. And you, you know, it's so cool that God has never done with us. He is never done with us. Too beautiful. And I see you back there and there and anybody else, just look at me. Just nod your head at me. Okay. Those of you who raise your hand, look at me. And even if you didn't, if today is your day, let's pray. I want you to repeat after me. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You died for me on the cross. It's a love that I cannot understand. But I receive it. 
I receive your love right now and I ask you that the Holy Spirit would come inside of me and make me new, that you would free me from any burdens, that you would free me. Oh, I know you can't keep repeating after me now. I'm preaching, girl. Just go with me. <laughs> that you would free me. Pray this with me in your heart, that you would free me from my burdens, that you would free me from my sin that you would make me whole and that you would make me new. And I ask you, Jesus, right now, I open the window of my heart and I ask you to put your spirit in me and forgive me of my sin. And I believe that that, that simple truth, that simple faith gives me eternal life. I can't even fathom eternal life with you, all glory, all beautiful, all radiant. Oh, I can't wait to see you face to face. But Jesus, help me to walk the narrow road. Help me to do it. Teach me, guide me, give me your counselor, your victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, wait a minute. We're not done. Because some of you have been walking with Jesus for a long time. And you got sin in the temple. And I want to pray for you too. If that's you... And you know he's turning over tables in you today. Receive it. He says, I will cut off every branch in me that does not bear good fruit. What in your life is not bearing good fruit? As we move forward in worship, don't run on out of here. Worship. Take a moment. Give that sin to him. Write it in your booklet. Hand it over to him. He wants it. What's holding you back from freedom? Leave it here. Don't walk out with it. Please don't. Tell a friend. Pray. Go in the prayer room. But many of you, and I know what this is, is to walk with Jesus in sin. And you got to lay it at his feet and let him fill you with his glory. Father, I just pray for any woman in this room that is in that situation. I pray you bind up her broken heart. I pray you turn over a table or two, and I pray that she receives it. In your holy name, amen.